Your Excellency, Excellencies, Ministers, Ladies and Gentlemen, it is a great honor and a pleasure to be here with you today. Since Germany hosted the first SM Ministerial Meeting on Education in 2008, progress has been impressive. For example, at the second ministerial meeting, it was agreed to establish the Education Secretariat to coordinate activities, the only SM structure of its kind. And that is how we come to have such a comprehensive stock-taking report before us today. The third ministry has set the four priorities that guide our work in this forum. These were introduced by different ASEAN partners, quality assurance and recognition by the European Commission and the Republic of Korea, engaging business and industry in education by Malaysia, balanced mobility by China, lifelong learning, including vocational education and training by Vietnam. This shows our readiness to focus on areas where each partner can offer added value. At this SM meeting on education, organized by the Latvian Ministry of Education and Science, with the SM Education Secretariat and other Latvian institutions, we are focusing on SM education collaboration for results. Plenary sessions will explore how we can ensure that young people develop the skills they need to be more employable and how we can use new technologies in education. Results, concrete results, this is what citizens are asking for and rightly so. In Europe, unemployment, especially among young people, continues to be unacceptably high. Europe is running a serious risk of losing an entire generation, people who are neither working nor studying, who are facing poverty and social exclusion. A youth without perspective seems to me the most dramatic and absurd waste for a society. We all know that education is much more than a means of supplying the labor market with human capital. Education goes far beyond helping people find a proper job. But when youth unemployment affects half of a generation, concrete results matter. We must deliver. Allow me to give a snapshot of the situation we are facing in Europe. More than 6 million young people are unemployed in the EU, with peaks of more than 50% in some member states. Even more alarmingly, 7.5 million young Europeans between 15 and 24 are neither in employment nor in education or training. And yet, the private sector is struggling to find employees with adequate skills. There are more than 2 million vacancies in the EU. Labor shortages, especially in the digital sector, are becoming a pressing issue for businesses. Moreover, Europe's labor force has started shrinking and will continue to do so for at least four decades. We also face the challenge of modernizing our education systems. The internet generation is not as well educated as might be expected, notably when it comes to science, maths, engineering, and technologies. And finally, the recent tragic terrorist attacks in Paris and Copenhagen remind us that we need to do much, much more to help young people find their place in society. Across member states, far too many youngsters are marginalized and lack a sense of belonging. How do we tackle these challenges? There is a common denominator, education in the widest sense of the word. Education has to be the starting point of our efforts to increase employability, raise productivity, address the skills mismatch, modernize our education systems, and prevent social exclusion. And the international dimension of education has a crucial role to play in this. Why? Because it brings huge benefits. 
an analysis of the 80,000 replies we received to our survey on the impact of the European Union's Erasmus Student Exchange Program shows this very clearly. We see that those who take part in the program are only half as likely to experience long-term unemployment as those who have not studied or trained abroad. They not only get new insights in their specific disciplines, but also develop wider cross-cutting skills and attitudes such as tolerance, confidence, problem-solving ability, and curiosity, which 92% of employers are looking for. This has inspired the design of our Erasmus Plus program, which will provide mobility for at least 20% of students by the end of the decade, compared to the current 10%. Moreover, the program will help develop international partnerships to build capacity and drive reforms in higher education. And it will encourage new types of cooperation to strengthen the knowledge triangle of education, research, and innovation. I hope many of you are sending delegates to our Erasmus Plus Information Day on Wednesday to see what the EU has to offer. President, ministers, ladies and gentlemen, the EU member states have around 4,000 higher education institutions in total. Despite a wide variety of languages, cultures and specific structures in the different countries, Europe's higher education systems are comparable and compatible. Why shouldn't we be able to replicate a similar system across Europe and Asia, in particular with the support of Erasmus Plus and our expertise? Internationalization is an opportunity. Partnerships can bring real benefits for higher education systems, institutions and individual students, researchers and staff. And even beyond, as I believe that our education dialogue is crucial to ensure sound exchanges and cooperation in other policy areas. In an ever more complex world, in which giving a sense to diversity and understanding and accepting pluralism is becoming a pressing need, we need to strengthen, strengthen the ties between our two continents. People-to-people -people exchanges, are, exchanges are both the ultimate goal and the precondition to a meaningful partnership. I would like to end by quoting Marie Curie, who said, you cannot hope to build a better world without improving the individuals. To that end, each of us must work for our own improvement. This is the basis of our cooperation programs, Erasmus Plus and the Marie Skrodowska Curie Actions, supporting training and mobility for teachers and researchers. I sincerely hope Europeans and Asians will be able to take advantage of the opportunities on offer. We are here to support the development of education systems in the ASM countries in a spirit of mutual respect and equal partnership. I wish you an excellent meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. And now I would like to give a floor to Mr. Idris Jusso, the Minister for for education of Malaysia to share his experience for ASEM process collaboration. Mr. President, ministers and participants, I am greatly honored to be here in this uh, ASEM meeting. And I would like to extend our gratitude and appreciation to the host country and also Secretariat from Indonesia. Allow me, why not we give them big hands today. SM has been meaningful to Malaysia to increase our quality of education through which, through greater collaboration with EU countries and education partners throughout the world. Malaysia hosted the fourth ASEM Ministry of Education in Kuala Lumpur two years ago 
in the year 2013. And last year, we hosted the ASEM International Seminar and Dialogue. I'm happy to see so many speakers and leaders of the world to participate in these two events, which open up opportunities for us to disseminate ideas and also to explore new initiatives in our education system. In the areas of lifelong learning, balanced mobility, quality assurance, and recognition. In launching our new blueprint three weeks ago by our Prime Minister, it is in the full spirit of ASEM enhancement. The blueprint recognized the need for greater collaboration to enhance our understanding and to address the international issues. As I say, in the areas of balanced mobility, quality assurance and recognition, and lifelong learning. As a result of ASEM, through our University of Malaya, we established Asia Europe Institute, whereby having professors from European Union and also from ASEAN countries, also having students from all the participating countries. This year, we are propagating a summer camp in Malaysia in the, big, in the middle of the year, and towards the end of the year, we're hoping to get some 40 participants from ASIM countries. We also believe that the collaboration should go on. We do have in Malaysia, British Malaysia Institute, Malaysia French Institute, German Malaysia Institute, Spanish Malaysia Institute, and Japanese Malaysia Institute established around more than 20 years ago. Alongside this, we also do have international branch campuses, such as from Nottingham University, Southampton University, Newcastle, Reading, and Herod Ward from UK. We do have three from Australia, Swinburne, Curtin, and Monash. We do have, have one from India, Manipal, and one from China, Xiamen University. With these universities, we do have a research collaboration, which we call My Mentor Program, for our postdoctorate students, whereby these big universities do help our postdoc students to get their to, to, to do their research under the prominent scholars and professors from this university. We also do have joint degree program with Germany. Two of our universities are doing joint degree program with Germany under DAAD or German Economic Exchange Services. In the area of quality assurance and recognition, our Malaysian Qualification Agency, or MQA, is recognized by international network of quality assurance agencies in higher education, which is based in Barcelona. We're also working together with QAA of UK and also quality qualification agencies in New Zealand and Australia. We are also working seriously to establish an ASEAN qualification reference network and also plus ASEAN plus three, a framework, a qualification framework with China, Japan, and South Korea. In trying to ensure there is comparability exercise and to find common denominator in our, the programs that we have done. Through existing, existing uh, programs, as I said, through the ASIM or Asia Europe Institute, through collaboration with the international branch campuses throughout the world and joint degree program and also research program, we're hoping to ensure that there's a greater collaboration among the ASIM countries. 
At the same time, we can also create new programs. And this hopefully will increase the mobility of students in the ASIM countries. Right now, we do have 15,000 Malaysian students in ASIM countries, and we have only 1,000 students from other countries to Malaysia. Hopefully, through this program, we can increase the mobility of students from in our countries. We also hope to get support from government and industries. I say this because Malaysia has something to offer in the field of biodiversity and heritage. Our multi-ethnicity, as we call Malaysia, is truly Asia, with Chinese and Indians in Malaysia, will be able to make all those participants to really understand multi-ethnicity in the world. And through our moderate Islamic, as a Muslim, moderate Islamic country, we hope that we can learn moderation in Islam. And we do believe that Malaysia can play a positive role in increasing Asia-Europe relationship. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. And I hope that this introductory uh, session really will play thoughts-provoking uh, introduction for further discussions during, uh, during the day. And now I would like to invite all of you to the break. And heads of delegation are invited to the family photo on the ground floor, and coffee break will be served uh, also on the ground floor. And please, I would like to pay special attention to the small exhibition organized by Ministry of Education and Science of Latvia on the ground floor. Uh, there is exhibition of 12 success stories with the title Inspired by Education. And I hope that during the, the breaks, you'll have a chance to, to read and, and observe those success stories. And if you are of particular interest to any of them, please, please let, let us know. And we shall continue our meeting at uh, 3 p.m. Thank you. 